The uh, firestorm created by racially charged comments allegedly made by Clippers owner Donald Sterling entered its second day with NBA Commissioner Adam Silver having vowed to conduct a thorough and swift investigation with President Barack Obama weighing in saying, quote, when ignorant folks want to advertise their ignorance, you don't really have to do anything. You just let them talk. That's what happened here, unquote. Today, the NAACP announced that Sterling, who was supposed to receive the Lifetime Achievement Award at a banquet next month marking the 100th anniversary of the organization's L.A. chapter, will not be so honored. And amid all that, there was the team the 80-year-old Sterling has owned for 33 years, the Clippers, preparing for Game 4 at Golden State. That's where David Aldridge picks up the story. Thank you, D.A. Okay, a little over 24 hours now we've been talking about this thing. Uh, when you take it all in from from uh, the Clippers' reaction to uh, Adam Silver's uh, meeting with the media last night, uh, to what the Clippers did as they took the floor today, playing and not boycotting it uh, or, or refusing to take the floor. How do you feel about everything that's transpired to this point, Charles? Well, I think Adam wants to look at the evidence. we got to make sure that's Mr. Sterling's voice on the tape. Then he has to ask swiftly and hastily. Uh, I, I'm glad the players played. It's, they didn't do anything wrong. Uh, they didn't do anything wrong. Uh, and why should they sacrifice all of their hard work? Chris Paul is a great player. Blake's a great player. DeAndre's playing well. Why should they sacrifice their quest to win the championship? Cup? Their owner's an idiot. And I'm glad they played. Obviously, it was a, it's been a crazy 24 hours. And, it, it, you know, David said something interesting. All these other people got to stay out of this. I think we got to let our NBA family, the players, the owners, well, the owners got to say something too, Ernie. The owners got to say, and it can't be Michael Jordan. I heard people say, well, the owners got to say something. Well, Michael Jordan's the owner. Michael Jordan is the owner, but we need some of these white owners who make a lot of their money off black players to say something too. They got to condemn those statements. That's the right thing to do. But I think the one thing that we, uh, we got to handle this because we can't have protest outside the NBA games. We can't have that because that's a very volatile and dangerous to put the cops who are great in an awkward situation. And, you know, you got race baiters out there who want crazy stuff to happen. How would you recommend fans <clears throat> voice what they <clears throat> are feeling right now? Well, you can voice it on social media. You can say what you want to. But I think I say it's not fair. The players, the protest at the players game. Uh, that, that that hurts the team. That, that Doc Rivers and Chris Paul did not do anything wrong. I, I agree with they didn't do anything wrong. But then uh, there's also sometimes family issues are bigger than your game. Some kind of mankind issues are bigger than the game. And I think this is starting to fall bigger than the game. So <clears throat> in terms of protests, I think there are a lot of different ways. If you want to, if, if I, I, I disagree on this point, uh, Charles, I just think that if you want to protest in any matter that you want, as long as it's peaceful, peaceful and, and, and and positive, I don't think that you, you you have right not to do that. I think you can be outside of the arena protesting <clears throat> if you want to, as long as you're doing it in a peaceful manner. Because like I said before, yesterday, you know, to me, racism is like is a refuge for ignorance. And he showed his ignorance uh, by by doing that. And then, you know, the inclusion that I've always been fighting for, it also, when you're not including people, it shows that you can't see your own faults. Because a lot of time when you include other groups, and then you see your own faults that you bear, which he doesn't understand, obviously, if that's him on the tape. So for me, I think it is important because it's a bigger issue than the game that people and the players do some form of protesting and some form of alliance to know that they're uncomfortable and do not like what he did. I appreciate your patience and in, in, in waiting to voice your opinion on this one now. We all, make, we all make some very interesting points. Uh, first of all, you know, I'm glad the players play because the reality of the situation is, is the fans and the players, we own this game. The owners are just custodians. You know, this is our game. I'm, you know, I'm glad the guys are, you know, they're going out uh, playing. You know, they did the little thing before the game. But, you know, we just have to go out, continue to play. We can't let ignorance bother us. He said what he said. We know what he's thinking now. We have his true colors. But I agree with Chuck. You know, we don't want to protest and, you know, put the cops in danger and, you know, have other things go on. You know, NBA needs to really take a hard look at it. You know, they, they need to make the decision on whether this guy still needs to be an owner. Uh, you know, this is a situation where an apology might not 
might not be okay. Well, March no. lot kind of similar with in, in the Cincinnati Reds, I believe it was. March right. shot. March, yes. March yes. shot. And then, you know. Yeah, she was forced to give up the team, right? Right, I, I believe so. And then right. one of the things well, like. She was, she was suspended from day-to-day -day -day operations right. of the team a couple of times, okay. once for a year, once for two years. And, and the, the biggest way to fight ignorance is through excellence. And that's the biggest hammer. So showing your excellence in your field and showing your excellence in your inclusion as, as we welcomed in uh, gay players into the NBA, welcomed in uh, other minorities, uh, welcomed in foreign basketball players. We have been the biggest inclusionary sport that I can, I can think of in modern times. So we have it right, but they're all bad apples. And, and like uh, President Obama said, all you got to do is let them talk. <laughs> Would it not help to, ha I mean, I don't think this is going to happen, but what if Donald Sterling were to address the matter? He has to, well, first of all, he has to address yeah. the matter. Yeah, I mean, it, now. It, um, it doesn't help him. It, 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 not, it. Ernie, all he can do is say, I really screwed up. You know, a lot of celebrities screw up things. They're afraid to say, you know what, I just screwed up. I was 100% wrong. That's all he can say. You know, the, the thing that's tricky with this, and I think Adam is a unique situation, uh, Silver, uh, I think if, uh, whether he sells the team or not, I think that's tricky. I don't know if you can just force somebody to, to sell their team. I don't even know, he has to make some symbolic suspension because I don't know what day-to-day -day operation Donald Sterling has with the Clippers, but from a symbolic standpoint, he has to do something. Well, you think about this, the reason they suspended, remember Ron Atchess ran into the stands? Mm-hmm. And the reason they, they suspended him for a year is because the biggest ticket holders, the people who feel safest, pay the most expensive seats. And if you feel unsafe in the most expensive seats around the league, then why would you do it? So now you have a culture of people uncomfortable coming into your arena now around the world, not just with the Clippers, because they, they feel uncomfortable. So you have to suspend him more than Ron Artest. A guy who ran into the stands and hit a fan. So if you look at what that is symbolically, I just think that you're making the whole league uncomfortable and everyone who comes uncomfortable to the entire NBA, not just the clip. And, and like I said, yesterday, this is real racism to me. Like when you dress up like, like a dunce in a clan thing or calling people the N-word, that just means you're ignorant. But when you have financial power, and you got the, 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 the ability to hire and fire people, that's racism. Those other people are just idiots. When you call people names and stuff, I laugh when I hear that stuff. But when you're in a position of power where people have to come and get jobs from you, that's real racism. And you're, and you're basing their salaries on what their, what their skill set is and not their creed or their color. We uh, certainly hope that uh, as we talk about how quick this investigation might go, that there might be some kind of a decision. Game five is Tuesday in Los Angeles. You would hope that there would be some resolution before then. It's possible there could be uh, if the investigation by Adam Silver the quicker the is better. complete. Oh, without question. Yeah.